As the sun is setting on 2019, we had our final qualifying session of the season in Abu Dhabi, and it was an okay session, not too great, but we did get some interesting talking points from it. And in this video, I'm going to review the events of qualifying. But before we get into the teams and how they did, let's first get into the results, the classification of qualifying itself. So, Lewis Hamilton is on pole position, second Valtteri Bottas, third Max Verstappen, fourth Leclerc, fifth Vettel, sixth Albon, and then completed the top 10, Norris, Ricardo, Sainz, Hulkenberg, knocked down Q2, Perez, Gasly, Stroll, Kvyat, Magnussen, and then knocked down Q1, Grosjean, Giovinazzi, Raikkonen, Russell, and Kubica. But now let's get into the teams, and first off, Mercedes, and they are really dominating the weekend. They clearly have the best car, that's why they locked out the front row of the grid. And Lewis Hamilton is simply too quick in this car. I think even if the car wasn't the best car this weekend, he would be still performing at a very high level because he's so good here, has the most poles at this track, and that car is way too good overall for the track. In the first two sectors, it's really about power, and then in the final sector, it's about grip, and the Mercedes car, as we know, has basically the perfect balance of that. So... Beating Lewis Hamilton today was going to be near impossible and it proved to be impossible for anyone else. For Valtteri Bottas, I think Valtteri did okay. Nothing great. I mean, let's be honest, he finished in P2 because of the car. If the car wasn't so good, I don't think Valtteri would have ended up in P2. And of course, he starts from the back of the grid on the medium compound tyres he got into Q3 on. And I think Valtteri... If he gets some luck with some safety cars or maybe a virtual safety car, don't be surprised if Valtteri finishes maybe ahead of one of the top team runners because he is very quick um, in that car still. And I think that car will be very quick in the race compared to, say, the Ferrari cars. So look out for Valtteri Bottas. He will be, I think, pretty good tomorrow. But for Lewis Hamilton, another pole position in Abu Dhabi and it's going to be very hard to stop him. Next up, Ferrari, and, well, P4, P5 was the best they could do. They just simply don't have a good enough car. In the final sector, they are losing six to seven tenths of a second. In the final sector alone. That is embarrassing for this team. And it's not really a surprise, is it? We knew coming into this weekend's race, they'd be poor in that final sector. And we knew that fighting for P1 in qualifying and the race was not really going to be a possibility given how poor they've been in the last few races. So, again, not really that big of a surprise, but still not good enough for Ferrari. Charles Leclerc finishing P4, even though he missed out on the, uh, you know, completing a final lap because he was either too slow on his outlap or Ferrari got the timing wrong. I'm not going to say right now what I think of it because I don't know the facts yet. So until I know the facts, I will give my opinion. But obviously not good when Charles Leclerc maybe could have qualified ahead of Max Verstappen, which of course would have put him on the front row for the race because of Bottas' penalty. So could have been better for Ferrari. Uh, for Sebastian Vettel though, he really has not been good this weekend. Normally, at this track, Sebastian is quite good, but he's been comfortably slower than Charles Leclerc this weekend. And considering that he has to start the race on a soft compound tyre, compared to his teammate on the medium and the two Mercedes and two Red Bulls on the medium, it's not looking good, is it, for Sebastian Vettel strategically for the race. But for Ferrari tomorrow... They're not in for a good race. I don't see them on the podium. I think even Albon will have uh, a much quicker pace because simply of the cars, not because of the drivers, but because of the car, the Ferrari car itself is so slow. And I just think because of the way they rip the tyres apart, especially in the final sector, I just don't see how Ferrari can compete in the Grand Prix tomorrow. Next up, Red Bull. Uh, Max Verstappen, I think, did the best he could, to be honest. Uh, let's be honest, the Mercedes car is the faster car this weekend. Max is doing the best he can. He will start on the front row alongside Lewis Hamilton. And we know Max can outperform his car and still win races. Uh, that he doesn't necessarily deserve to win. 
So he's not out of it yet, but it's going to take the best version of Max Verstappen to beat Lewis Hamilton tomorrow, I think. But yeah, today, I think it did the best he could. Albon in P6. I'm going to say it again, not good enough. Half a second behind his teammate. Yes, the car is built a lot more towards Max Verstappen, but I, you know, ripped apart Pierre Gasly for so many races for, for this exact reason. I've got to do it for Albon as well. You cannot be half a second slower than your teammate. Can't. And I'm not saying he should have been higher than sixth place. That's not the point. It's just the pure lap time from Albon. Simply not good enough. Simply not good enough. And in the race, he does have to improve because I've been saying this weekend that this is, this weekend's race, a great chance for Albon to finish on the podium. So he's got to improve that speed if he wants to get it in the Grand Prix tomorrow. But now into the midfield. First off, Renault. Who got P8 and P10? I don't think necessarily they got that because the car is quick. I think it's more likely to be the two drivers driving very well. Nico Hülkenberg historically does go well here. And Daniel Ricciardo produced a great performance to get into Q3 and to get into P8 with a fantastic lap. Uh, the only lap he did in qualifying three. And we saw uh, most of it during the session or during you know when people were coming out of the pits and he was pushing so hard but making so many little uh you know such little error it was such a good lap and it really was deserving of a good position so great qualifying for daniel ricardo and good for hulkenberg as well in what is likely his final race in formula one uh but yeah renault for tomorrow's race looking good and as long as they don't get outscored by Toro Rosso by eight points, then I guess it's a good weekend. Uh, next up is McLaren, the other Renault-powered team. Lando Norris, definitely a standout performer today, who, you know, out-qualified teammate Carlos Sainz, which he hasn't been able to do that much this season. Um, well, not this season, but in, you know, in the last few races more so. Uh, he has struggled in that area, but... Yeah, nice to see Norris having a good qualifying. And for Lando, I think definitely if you look at the session, it wasn't comfortable for Lando. He wasn't guaranteed to finish in that position based on how he was doing in Q2 and Q1. He only just about got into qualifying three. He was in the drop zone going into that final run. So very good qualifying for Lando Norris. Carlos Sainz will be disappointed. Uh, not to be in P7 because he was very quick in the first run of qualifying three, but then didn't improve his second run. So clearly Carlos has more pace uh, in his pocket. But McLaren, good. But really, as expected, they clearly have the best car in the midfield. One uh, team, though, that has the worst car in the midfield this weekend, at least, is Alfa Romeo, 17th. And 18th. Not really a surprise though, is it? Because in practice two yesterday, they were 17th and 18th. And their car just doesn't look good. It's got no front end in the slower corners. The rear end is trying to step out every time they go through um, a medium speed corner. It's just not a good car around this track. So no surprise. 17th and 18th. But good again for Antonio Giovinazzi. But qualify Kimi Raikkonen. Pass F1 next up, and they had a qualifying that was quite surprising, honestly, because in practice, looked as though Haas were going to get a car in the top 10, but they ended up 15th and 16th. And Roman Grosjean, I think, said after the session that the car was undrivable. So I have no idea what's happened. Maybe it's the difference in temperature uh, track temperature, because I know in Brazil, Haas's position in qualifying was very dependent on uh, track temperature. So maybe that's the reason, but very disappointing. Very disappointing, considering, again, the pace they had in practice. And for the race tomorrow, we know what's going to happen. They're not going to be anywhere near the points. Toro Rosso, the next team. And they had, you've got to say, quite a disappointing session. P12 and P14, I believe it was. And considering their pace in practice as well, you've got to say, disappointing for them as well. 
really should have been getting a car in the top 10, I think. Um, and I think they'll be disappointed not to get a car in the top 10. And I think considering, you know, their battle with Renault in the constructors, they really had to get at least one car in the top 10. But with no cars in the top 10, it's not looking good for tomorrow. But as long as Toro Rosso go out there and just race uh, their hearts out, then who knows? Maybe they can get P5 in the constructors. And the final midfield team is Racing Point. Uh, P11 and P13, which is actually not that bad. Racing Point also in practice looked pretty good, but I think considering how they normally are on race day and how they manage their tyres and how the two drivers are on the race, I think they're in for a, a good points haul, and I think they're definitely the dark horses in that midfield battle for a good result. And as long as they get a good start and get away fine and you know climb some positions early on, I think definitely look out for Sergio Perez and Lance Stroll. And of course, the two Williamses were at the very back. But guys, that's it for qualifying in 2019. And tomorrow, we round off the season in tomorrow's Grand Prix in Abu Dhabi.